Regarding documentaries, is observational documentary filmmaking your favorite kind? Or Yeah, it probably okay. is. Um, I don't know. There's something about that fly on the wall thing. So this is I'm going to contradict what I said earlier about the sort of um, subjective style of some of those other filmmakers. There's something about um, whether it's the, the, the voyeurism of it, um, the feeling of um, being able to just see inside someone else's life um, unimpeded um, that I don't know it's, it's so exciting it's so um, I can get awestruck like um, a movie like Salesman you ever seen Salesman the Maisel's documentary about the Bible salesman oh you should watch that film no. if you're interested in documentary okay, filmmaking yes. you should Let watch that, do that one, yeah. um, or even like yeah Frederick Weissman's um, high school um, but in salesmen, just watching, you just watch. You watch these Bible salesmen and you watch them fail and you watch them struggle. Um, and there's no judgment, there's no commentary, there's no interruption. It's just watching them, um, watching the, these men struggle in what now seems like um, a kind of antiquated um, job, although we have telemarketing now, which is the same thing. <laughs> essentially um, and I don't know you get so much information from that you learn so much without them having to sort of um, hit you over the head um, with what they're trying to get you to understand you know I mean it's 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 no different than death of a salesman I mean you, you're getting a kind of a very similar message from Glenn Gary Glenn Ross um, you're getting a, a very kind of similar message but like um, there's no didacticism in it you just watch you watch and you watch. There's a great moment in it where uh, the guy's the main character, Paul. He's just gone up to somebody's house and he wasn't able to make a sale. And they follow him back to his car and they just sit in this car with him. And he's just kind of muttering to himself. I think he starts singing a little bit. And we're just watching him do that. And he's just kind of dejected. Uh, you know, he's got to go now, he's got to start the car and he's got to go to the next house and try to sell the Bible to them. Um, and it's not orchestrated, it's not created. Um, they're just following this guy around with their camera and their and their Nagra sound recorder. And um, I don't know, it feels it feels so real and also authentic, but it also just feels so human. Um, that I really respond to that sort of stuff. I think when you had a Q and A for your film, uh, Jonas was mm -hmm. it? You had another teacher in the audience, and he talked about being uh, like in anthropology mm -hmm. and sometimes going up to subjects, for lack of a better word, without any film in the camera mm -hmm. and getting them totally desensitized. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's possible? Yeah, it's possible. It may not be ethical, but it's possible. I mean, there is a whole school, like someone like Bill Nichols, again, talks about um, ethnography. And it's, um, you know, one of the things that happens when you're making a documentary and you're going into a place, you are just taking something from someone. You're just using their lives to create something that you think is interesting and, and um, that you're going to use for who knows what. Um, and so there is a kind of um, ethical dilemma there, or an ethical question, I guess I should say. Um, and I mean, lots of people have written about this. There's been all kinds of stuff about um, the the ethics of doing that, of going, especially going into um, a different culture, maybe a poorer country, and trying to document that poverty. Um, but there's nothing that the film's going to do that's going to solve those people's issues. You're just kind of using their poverty to promote yourself ultimately as a filmmaker. Um, so, I mean, that if it, but that's kind of be a th been a thing that people have gotten more aware of um, uh, now. And so people tend to acknowledge their own presence and perhaps how problematic some of that is. Um, but yeah, I mean, getting... I will say, like, it's one of the other things they talk about when we talk about documentary film. Um, it, getting people to not be aware of the camera is very, very difficult. Um, it's, you know, it's the least natural thing in the world to have a camera, like, pointed at you. Um, yeah, it's one of the things, not even about documentary, but trying to explain to students how difficult um, the job of an actor is. You know, you got lights, you got a camera, you got a guy holding the sound, uh, the boom mic, you got all these people watching you, and somebody says, be natural. 
this is the least natural experience of my life. How can I be natural? And so it's the same thing if you're making a documentary. Everybody becomes hyper aware of the camera. Um, you know, some a friend of mine used to say you could throw a grenade into a room and you'll get a more natural response than if you bring a camera into it. Um, and so one of the things that, that I think lots of filmmakers do is you, so you don't try to hide from that. You don't try to hide from the fact that people are aware of the camera and they're going to interact with it. Um, you know, you let that be part of the, the movie. Um, something like um, American Movie. Have you ever seen American Movie? The Chris Smith and Sarah Price, you know, Mark Borchardt. He's just, he's directly addressing that camera. He's performing for the camera a lot and um, they just let that stuff play. You know, they're not trying to be purely observational at all. Um, and I mean, it's a movie about a guy making a movie, so it'd be kind of hard to ignore the, the technology of, of a movie. Do you ever plan to make another documentary again? So I know you did one on your family, most particularly on your brother. Yeah. Um, I don't think so. I don't have any plans to. I'm, I'm much more of a narrative filmmaker than a documentary filmmaker. Um, if something were to interest you, I mean, it's like I said when we were talking about students, like if something sparks your interest and they want to pick up a camera and make it, then I would. Um, but I don't have any designs on it. Like everything that I have planned, the thing that I'm finishing now, the stuff that I have planned for the future, they're all narrative. Um, I'm just, I don't know. Do I think documentary, um, documentary is, is extremely difficult and can feel like it's never, I mean, they all feel like they're never ending, but I don't, there's something, documentary, you know, it's just, it can be, you know, whatever, Hoop Dreams was, I think they did that, that was eight years, you know, um, from the time they first started shooting those kids until the time that the film actually premiered. That may not be right, but I believe it's eight years. Um, it's just so time consuming. But, who knows? But I don't have any plans to. What advice would you have for one of your students or someone listening who wants to make a film about their family, their environment, where they grew up, something that's very close to them and the pros and cons with that and how the people in the film eventually see themselves, whether they like it or not. And, <laughs> and <laughs> I realize I'm throwing a lot of questions at you. Yeah. Like the whole, I mean, whole gamut. Of I mean, my advice is always if you're interested in making something, make it. Um, it can, I mean, my family was very supportive of me doing that film. It didn't, it didn't bring any sort of big issues out, no big fights. Um, I mean, you certainly don't want to just show up with a camera and say, okay, I'm making a film about our family. Um, it's certainly something that you're going to have to talk through, um, with people. Um, I, I just, I, the relationships and all that sort of stuff. I mean, that that's, I think, on a case-to-case -case basis. I would just say, generally speaking, it goes back to the thing that we talked about before. Um, what's your point of view? Why are you telling this story? What's interesting about this story? Um, there are any number of movies, the filmmakers making films about their family. So um, what is your point of entry? Um, what is the audience's point of entry? Um, I think that's the most important thing to talk about. It. Um, you know, I mean, you gotta, yeah, if there, are, I, I know of multiple people who have started making documentaries or oriented around their family and then stuff is sort of blown up within the relationships and that was the end of the movie. <laughs> yeah. And the movie didn't get finished. So you gotta be careful of that. But I didn't go through that experience, so I don't know what the, I'm sure there are warning signs um, for that thing sort of happening. I'm thinking specifically of a filmmaker. I know she was making a film about her. Sister, I don't even remember what the topic was, but she was around her sister and her husband, and as she's you know shooting stuff, she recognizes, oh, their marriage is falling apart, and that was kind of the end of the movie after that. Um, so I, you know, I mean, but that's a that's a case by case. You got to recognize that stuff as you're going in. Um, but I, I I always go back to like. Why are you telling this story? What's what's your point of view? Why is it unique? What's different about it? Um, because there, are, I mean, as cameras get easier and easier to get a hold of, they get cheaper. Um, we can shoot on our phone. Everybody's making a movie. 
Why does anybody need to see yours? Um, what's your point of view? Now, here's the other side of that, though. I would say this. It doesn't matter. Um, even if you're a movie, to some degree or another, it doesn't matter. If you really feel compelled to make it, you should make it. Even if it's the same as 10 other movies, you should make it, or 100 other movies. Because the um, regret of not making it is way worse than the feeling of, oh, they made that movie's, my movie's just like their movie. That doesn't feel great, but I should have made that feels way worse. Way worse. Um, but if you want your movie to stand out, you got to figure out your perspective and point of view.